Compared to sedentary individuals, physically active men and women may have approximately 30% lower risk of premature death. Even just walking 15 minutes a day may reduce mortality risk by 15%. Mortality rates continue to drop about 4% for each additional 15 minutes of moderate exercise a day, like walking, plateauing out at about 90 minutes a day. What does that translate to in terms of time? The life expectancy for those walking just 15 minutes a day would be about three years longer compared to those who don't exercise regularly, and those meeting the recommended 30 minutes a day live about four years longer. If you jog a few hours a week, or are in the top 5% of cardiorespiratory fitness, you may live five or six years longer. Exercising for 20 minutes may add an hour to your life. So for all those who say they don't have time to work out, exercising gives us like a 3 to 1 return on investment. Give 20 minutes of your life to get 60 minutes of life. Uh, beyond that, there's a bit of diminishing returns, but exercise an hour a day and maybe get back more time than you put in. The return for vigorous exercise may be even greater, as much as 7 to 1. An hour of running could potentially extend your life 7 hours. Running even 5 to 10 minutes a day at a jogging pace, less than 6 miles per hour, may net the same longevity benefits of the 15 minutes of daily walking. Similarly, Running 15 to 20 minutes a day may be equivalent to walking an hour a day, and 25 minutes of running can match walking's maximum mortality benefits that top off at around 100 minutes. The benefits of running, however, continue to increase until about 45 minutes a day. Walking is the most commonly reported exercise, and though it is not as time-effective as running, it's easier and safer to start and sustain, particularly if you, like much of the population, are starting out sedentary. Walking is among the safest of physical activities, averaging only about one injury per thousand hours, not using your cell phone, and walking against traffic when on roads without sidewalks can reduce pedestrian injuries. In contrast, nearly 70% of serious runners become injured over a year-long period, suffering most commonly from knee problems. There does not appear to be an increased risk of knee osteoarthritis, though, in all but the most elite long-distance runners, who have about three times higher odds. Recreational runners do not appear to be at higher risk. The current official physical activity guidelines recommend adults get at least 150 minutes a week of moderate aerobic exercise, which comes out to be a little more than 20 minutes a day. That's actually down from previous recommendations from the Surgeon General, the CDC, and the American College of Sports Medicine for at least 30 minutes a day. This is construed as a trade-off between optimizing health outcomes and minimizing requirements for individuals. The exercise authorities seem to have fallen into the same trap as the nutrition authorities, recommending what they think may be achievable, rather than simply informing you what the science says and letting you make up your own mind. They already emphasize that any physical activity is better than none, so why not stop patronizing the public and just tell everyone the truth? The optimal dose of exercise for maximizing longevity remains uncertain, but a pooled analysis of more than a half million men and women, followed for an average of more than a dozen years, found that mortality rates bottomed out at about 90 minutes a day of moderate-intensity physical activity, mostly walking. Compared to no regular exercise, though exercising just about 30 minutes a day gets you about 80% of the way to the maximum exercise benefit. Older adults are also encouraged to do both muscle strengthening and flexibility training at least twice a week, along with incorporating balance exercises. Instead of exercise measured in minutes, what about measured in steps? Nonagenarians, those in their 90s in the Sardinian Blue Zone, average about 12,000 steps a day just living their lives. 
Based on a representative sample of thousands of U.S. adults, those getting 12,000 steps a day had a 65% lower risk of dying over the subsequent decade compared to those getting only 4,000 steps a day. Even just getting 8,000 a day appeared to cut the risk of premature death in half. A study of more than 15,000 older U.S. women found that just 4,400 steps a day could reduce mortality rates compared to 2,700 steps a day, raising the question, is 4,400 steps per day the new 10,000 steps per day? Where did the 10,000 steps a day recommendation even come from? Surprisingly, it likely originated as the brand name of a Japanese pedometer sold in 1965 called Manpo Kai, or 10,000 steps meter. In terms of walking, the recommendation for 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity aerobic exercise gets us to approximately 7,000 steps a day. The maximum longevity dose of around 90 minutes a day, uh, technically 22.5 to 40 so-called met hours a week, would give most people a total of about 13,500 steps per day.